Hey friend, welcome to Finding Life. My name is Brian Bell. I'm so glad you're here. It is Wednesday, April 12th, 2023, week 11, day three, live stream number 54, day number 102 of the new year. Hey, let's know where we are. Let's know where we're going. Let's know why we're going there. And let's make today count. Hey, good morning, live streamer. I got one live streamer so far. I know we'll have more here in a few. Hey, there's another one. Let's get you added to the show. Good morning, my beautiful Bobby Bell, my beautiful sunshine bride. Bobby says, happy Wednesday. God is good. Yes, he is. Thankfully, thankfully, we have him on our side. Good morning, Dana, Bobby's sister, Dana in Tennessee. Dana, are you in Tennessee today or are you, uh, are you out and about uh, like you were earlier this week? Let us know. Let us know in the live chat. Good morning, Dana. So glad you're able to join us on the show. I appreciate you being here. And then uh, Dana says, always, Bobby. Yes, praise God. God is good all the time. My mom, my beautiful mom in Tennessee. Good morning, mom. So great to see you on the show as always. So glad you're able to join in and interact with us here on the live stream. I appreciate you. Hey, thank you for the like. I appreciate that. That helps with the algorithm. And so uh, I'll take uh, any help I can get. So thank you. Hey, good morning. It's Wednesday. Happy hump day. If uh, Robert was here or if he joins in, I'm sure he will be saying happy hustle day. I saw this morning on Robert's Instagram. He was up at, uh, let's see, what time was it? He was up at 317 this morning, getting after it. He was talking about how discipline beats motivation. We're going to talk a little bit about that this morning in the pre-show. And uh, But yeah, discipline beats motivation. Motivation doesn't last, but discipline is a fruit of the spirit. So we have discipline. There he is. There he is. Happy hustle day. I know what you mean, brother. Happy hustle day. Hey, Robert, so glad you're here, my bro. Way to get up this morning and use that self, that God-given self-discipline and get after it, even though you didn't feel like it. Sometimes all we can do is show up, right? Sometimes all we can do is show up, but showing up is better than doing nothing. And we just keep moving forward. Woody Allen says, 80% of success is showing up. We just got to keep showing up. Sometimes on this show, all I can do is show up and I just keep showing up. That's my goal. Just got to keep showing up. Robert says, if you ain't hustling, you are slipping. That's right. I feel like we're on the, the earth is like, it's always in motion. It's always in motion. So if we're sitting still, we're actually moving backwards because we're never sitting still. We're never sitting still. We're either moving forward or we're gliding backwards. Always on it. All right, let's see, let's see. Yes, Robert, I think that's, uh, let me get that one. There you go. If you ain't hustling, you're slipping. That's true. Let's see, Dana says, Dana says, we'll be leaving Birmingham today, heading to Pensacola. All right, Dana, on the road, on the road again. Hey, Dana, I hope you're enjoying your journey, enjoying your journey. And um, I want to talk today, I'm in this season with my with my job. I go through seasons of intense workload overwhelm. Four times a year, I go through this. I'm in my second season this year so far. Thankfully, after this this season, I'll be in this season until May 1st, and then it'll start to kind of settle back down again, and then it's going to come back around. Thankfully, not again until like July, August, so I'll get a little bit of a break in between, and then I'm going to have two more uh, back-to-back starting in August. But this, you know, I was going to start this YouTube channel January 2022, this job that I have, it was already the most stressful, overwhelming job I've ever had in my life. Uh, been been in the workforce for 35 years, maybe. And uh, it was already the most stressful, challenging job I've ever had. And then last January, when I was planning to start this YouTube channel, my workload doubled. I took the, I took the responsibilities of an entire additional person with the same title as me. And so my workload doubled. I couldn't I couldn't, I was like, I can't do, I can't do, I can't start my YouTube channel. Like my, my mind was just like consumed. I was completely overwhelmed with work. I've been doing this now since for over a year now, like a year and three months. This January, I was like, I can't put off my YouTube channel anymore. It doesn't matter how bad my workload is. I just got to start. And so I did this January 30th. It was like, I was coming, I was planning on starting it this year, January, 2023, and then here we were, we were, we were coming into the last week of January, and here I was about to let another whole month slip by without starting my YouTube channel. And I was like, it was eating me inside, eating me from the inside out like a cancer. I was like, I cannot let this happen. I have to just start. 
And so that Monday morning, the last Monday of January, January 30th, I just showed up. I just showed up and did my first live stream ever. Not really, not really prepared that much, but I just had to show up and start. And that's what I did. And so that's what I'm trying to do now, just show up. Even in the season right now, I'm in the season now, last week and this week, where I've been in the state of like complete overwhelm. And it's just like, it's it's like, you know, we should be able to live above our circumstances, right? Like we, our circumstances don't have to control our joy. But like I say, everything in life is easier said than done. And so it's a challenge for me. And, and even though I've been on this journey of finding life for over 10 years, it's like, I, I haven't arrived and I don't feel like I ever will arrive. I feel like it's always going to be a journey. That's why it's called finding life, not found life, because it's always a work in progress. So I'm in a season right now of complete overwhelm. Today I want to talk about problems. I want to talk about problems. I've heard uh, problems. I started reading this book. Uh, I started reading this book this past uh, weekend. It's called The Road Less Traveled. This book, I picked it up. Uh, when Chloe's dog Stormy passed away the first week of January this year. And um, I don't remember what it's called. It's like cremation, but it's done with water. And that's where we took her. There in their lobby, they had a stack of these books, The Road Less Traveled by Dr. Scott Peck. And uh, I was going to buy one. And they're like, oh, you can just have it. Some guy just brought him in here and left him. I, I've never heard of this book. I've never heard of Dr. Scott Peck. But this book is, I guess, 20 years old. It says more than 7 million copies sold. Um, let me find my glasses. It says here, um, this book, um, it's been translated into more than 23 languages and has spent more than 10 years on the New York Times bestsellers list. It says, um, written in a voice that is timeless in its message of understanding, the road less traveled continues to help us explore the very nature of loving relationships and leads us toward a new serenity and fullness of life. It helps us learn how to distinguish dependency from love, how to become a more sensitive parent, and ultimately how to become one's own true self, which is what finding life is all about. It's about us living our lives true to ourselves, being the person that we are created to be. And so Dr. Peck, he was a psychiatrist, uh, and best-selling author. He went to Harvard and then in medical school. He died in 2005 at the age of 69. But he starts out his book. He starts out his book, the very first line, life is difficult. Very first line of the first chapter, life is difficult. I want to read a little bit of this this morning about, about problems. It says, life is difficult. This is a great truth, one of the greatest truths. It is a great truth because once we truly see this truth, we transcend it. Once we truly know that life is difficult, once we truly understand and accept it, then life is no longer difficult. Because once it is accepted, the fact that life is difficult no longer matters. That's a little bit that's a little bit hard for me to wrap my head around. But it says once we truly understand and accept that life is difficult, then life is no longer difficult. That's what he says. So since life poses an endless series of problems, life is always difficult and and full and is full of pain as well as joy. Yet it is this whole process of meeting and solving problems that life has its meaning. It is only because of problems that we grow mentally and spiritually. As Benjamin Franklin said, those things that hurt instruct. It is for this reason that wise people learn not to dread, but actually to welcome problems and actually to welcome the pain of problems. And then over here it says, when we avoid the legitimate suffering that results from dealing with problems, we also avoid the growth that problems demand from us. It is for this reason that in chronic mental illness, we stop growing, we become stuck, and without healing, the human spirit begins to shrivel. And this book is about achieving mental and spiritual health. He says, by this, I mean, let us teach ourselves and our children the necessity for suffering and the value thereof, 
the need to face problems directly and to experience the pain involved. Discipline is the set is the basic set of tools we require to solve life's problems. So discipline, it's a fruit of the spirit. We have discipline. We have self-discipline. We just have to use it. It says, when we teach ourselves and our children discipline, we are growing them and ourselves how to suffer and also how to grow. And then he has four tools he lists that he calls discipline. They are delaying of gratification, acceptance of responsibility, dedication to truth, and balancing. He says these are simple tools. Almost all children are adept in their use by the age of 10, Yet presidents and kings will often forget to use them to their own downfall. The problem lies not in the complexity of these tools, but in the will to use them. For they are tools with which pain is controlled. I'm sorry. They are tools with which pain is confronted rather than avoided. And if one seeks to avoid legitimate suffering, then one will avoid the use of these tools. Therefore, after analyzing each of these tools, we shall see in the next section, examine Let's see. We will. We shall in the next section examine the will to use them, which is love. So he says, discipline is what we use to meet our problems and our challenges head on. Discipline is delaying gratification, acceptance of responsibility, dedication to truth, and balancing. And then our will to use the discipline that we are given comes from love. All right, that's a little bit of this book that I just started this past week, and I haven't read a whole bunch of it yet. That's about it. Um, I heard, uh, Dr. Norman Vincent Peale, I've heard him tell this story about this guy who was just always moaning and groaning about his problems. And Dr. Norman Vincent Peale was trying to encourage him. He said, Hey, I found this place that has a hundred thousand people and not a single one has a problem. And the guy was all excited. He's like, yes, it was like, it was like, it was some utopia. Like the guy was like, take me there. And Dr. Peel told him it was at Woodlawn Cemetery. Woodlawn Cemetery. The problem was they were all dead. So problems are actually a good thing. Problems mean that we're alive. It means that we're alive and we're moving forward. And the problems, they cause us to grow. And when we're facing problems, we should be thankful. How hard is that? It can be challenging for sure. I know it for me. Hey, you guys, stay, stay active in the live chat. Let me know your thoughts this morning about problems, facing problems, going through problems. If you avoid problems, if you meet them head on. A couple of things here. It says, uh, let's see, let me look at my notes from this morning. Um, we're going to look at a couple things about problems. Oh, one thing is Jocko. Jocko, I want to I want to quote Jocko this morning. Jocko would say, got problems? Good. That's what he would say. Right, Robert? Right, Robert? You ever heard uh, Jocko say that? You got problems? Good. It's a good thing. Hey, in the Word, I'm going to reference the Word this morning. In James, it says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers, when you encounter trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Allow perseverance to finish its work so that you may be mature and complete and not lacking anything. And then in Romans 5, it says, It says, uh, we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Not only that, but we also rejoice in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not disappoint us because God has poured out his love into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, whom he has given us. So the word says for us to rejoice in our sufferings, to consider it pure joy when we face trials of many kinds. Robert, Robert says, good. Let me get back over here, Robert, get you added to the screen. Robert says, good. You got problems? Good. All right, it's live. It means we're alive and well. We're alive and well. Uh, let's see here. Uh, my live stream. I don't know. I just got some kind of notification about my live stream has been adjusted. I don't know. Hopefully, it shows we're still alive, so hopefully we're okay. It gave me the option to end the live stream or keep recording. We're going to keep moving forward, baby. All right, let's see what my mom says here. My mom says, life is always hard because we're in a world where the devil roams free. But praise God, we have him to get us through any situation. Amen, mom. Amen, mom. I'm going to read that again. 
Mom says, life is always hard because we're in a world where the devil roams free, but praise God, we have him to get us through any situation. Yes, praise God. All right. I think we're going to get into the Word now. Let me look at my notes and see if I'm missing anything else that I wanted to talk about this morning. I had I had a quite a bit. Um, you know, like I said earlier in the show, sometimes all I can do is just show up. And whenever I do show up, like yesterday, for example, all I did was show up. I really didn't have anything extra yesterday, and that's okay because Jesus or God plus nothing is everything. His Word is enough. So, so you know, when days I just need to show up, I'm just going to show up. And uh, we'll keep moving forward. And I am planning to launch this show into second gear soon. Hopefully, what I'm thinking is maybe I do want to start doing interviews soon. I want to interview people that are that have that are living life true to themselves. And so that's one thing I'm looking to do soon. Probably once I get through this season, this this season of intense work through the first of May, then we're going out of town the first weekend of May. Maybe when I get back from that, I'll start doing interviews. And we'll shift the show into second gear. So, hey, if you're living life true to yourself and you want to be interviewed, let me know. We'll get you on the show. Another thing I want to say. Yesterday, I'm going to show a picture here. Yesterday, uh, I was on my way to work and I get a text from Jason Polk, my pastor, Echo Church, the church we moved here to help start in 2019. He sends me a text and says, hey, him and Preston are doing house calls. Can they bring me a coffee? And I was like, oh my gosh, the timing could not have been better. I'm super stressed. I'm overwhelmed. I would love a visit. I would love a fresh coffee. And so they came by. Let me let me go over here and share this photo. Here's a picture of Jason, my pastor, Jason Polk, and his son, Preston. Preston's out on spring break. So Jason was taking Preston around with him all day yesterday. And uh, they came by my work, gave me a coffee. Preston wanted to see the tour of my building, so I gave him like a, a small little tour and, and showed him my office. Uh, that was on our story yesterday, but uh, but yeah, that was super super sweet, and I was super thankful. And uh, Jason and Preston, they both prayed for me in my office, and um, it was a sweet time, sweet time. So, Jason Polk, thank you, brother. I appreciate you. All right, let's get back to the to the other screen, and we shall dig into the word. Hey, one and one more thing. I heard Jordan Peterson out yesterday, just talking about like like an example of my workload. Before I went on vacation, we went for vacation on Friday, and uh, that Friday I worked all day. Came home, I was exhausted. I took a nap on the couch. I woke. I actually slept on the couch from like six to eleven. Ended up waking up at eleven. I worked from eleven p.m. to four a.m getting everything done I needed to get done before I went on vacation. Yesterday, I worked all day, came home, said hello to Bobby. I went for a four-mile walk in the hills. That was great. Came home, had a little dinner, and then I and then I worked on stuff till 10 o'clock last night. So one thing I heard last night on my walk, Jordan Peterson, he talks about uh, pursuing what makes you happy versus pursuing what you find meaningful. And what he said was, pursuing what makes you happy is a luxury but pursuing what but pursuing what makes you what you find meaningful is an obligation pursuing what makes you happy is a luxury but pursuing what you find meaningful is an is a moral obligation i like that so i want to share that with you this morning all right we're going to get into the Word. We're going to get into the Word. Live streamers, stay alive, stay active. As I read through the Word, let me know if you have any thoughts on anything, any insight, any teaching. You know, I want this to be as interactive as possible. If you're on the live stream this morning, be sure to let me know. You can say hello. You can ask questions, add comments. If you're catching this on YouTube after the recording or on the podcast, just know that I strive to record these every morning, Monday through Friday at 6 a.m. Pacific, live from Anaheim, California. Our, our uh, mayor says the happiest place on earth, home of Disneyland. So come join us. We would love to have you on the live show. Uh, also on YouTube, if you're catching it after the recording, you can uh, leave me comments. You can, there's links below to everything. You can send me an email. Uh, I have an email address just for prayer. If you need prayer, it's prayer at sbrianbell.com. Uh, I'll pray for you. And also you can uh, you can even set up a call with me. There's links to, There's links below to everything. We're laying the foundation in the Word. 
on this opening year of YouTube. The word to me is life, and it is the foundation for life and for finding life. Wisdom says in Proverbs 8.35, whoever finds me finds life. Matthew 7 says, small is the gate and narrow the path that leads to life, and only a few find it. I'm here to help you find it. Let me know any way I can help. My goal is to live my life true to me, true to the person God created me to be, to live the life that God created me to live, and help you do the same. So let me know how I can help. Hey, yesterday I found out after the show, I read the wrong day. Yesterday I read today's reading, so today we're going to read yesterday's reading. And it's good, as always. So let's get into it. We're going to continue along reading. Oh, it looks like... uh, Looks like my live stream did crash. Looks like my live stream did crash. As I see now, we are going to continue recording. We will continue recording and finish out the show. It looks like I'm still recording, but I'm no longer live. I just I just now see. All right. We're going to continue reading in Luke. A hey, the thief comes to steal, kill and destroy, but we're going to press on. We're going to keep pressing on. All right, here we go. In Luke, then Jesus gave the following illustration. Can one blind person lead another? Won't they both fall into a ditch? Students are not greater than their teacher, but the student who is fully trained will become like the teacher. And why worry about a speck in your friend's eye when you have a log in your own? How can you think of saying, friend, Let me help you get rid of that speck in your eye when you can't see past the log in your own eye. Hypocrite. First, get rid of the log in your own eye. Then you will see well enough to deal with the speck in your friend's eye. A good tree can't produce bad fruit, and a bad tree can't produce good fruit. A tree is identified by its fruit. Figs never grow on thorn bushes, nor grapes on bramble bushes. A good person produces good things from the treasury of a good heart, and an evil person produces evil things from the treasury of an evil heart. What you say flows from what is in your heart. So why do you keep calling me Lord, Lord, when you don't do what I say? I will show you what it's like when someone comes to me, listens to my teaching, and then follows it. It is like a person building a house who digs deep, and lays the foundation on solid rock. That's what I'm striving to do right here, laying the foundation in the Word. When the floodwaters rise and break against the house, it stands firm because it was well built. But anyone who hears and doesn't obey is like a person who builds a house without a foundation. When the floods sweep down against that house, it will collapse into a heap of ruins. When Jesus had finished saying all of this to the people, he returned to Capernaum. At that night, the highly valued slave of a Roman officer was sick and near death. When the officer heard about Jesus, he sent some respected Jewish elders to ask him to come and heal his slave. So they earnestly begged Jesus to help the man. If anyone deserves your help, he does. If anyone deserves your help, he does, they said. For he loves the Jewish people and even built a synagogue for us. So Jesus went with them. But just before they arrived at the house, the officer sent some friends to say, Lord, don't trouble yourself by coming to my home, for I am not worthy of such an honor. I am not even worthy to come and meet you. Just say the word from where you are, and my servant will be healed. I know this because I am under the authority of my superior officers, and I have authority over my soldiers. I only need to say, go, and they go, or come, and they come. And if I say to my slaves, do this, they do it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed. Turning to the crowd that was following him, he said, I tell you, I haven't seen faith like this in all Israel. And when the officer's friends returned to his house, they found the slave completely healed. Today's Psalm, or should I say yesterday's Psalm. Rise up, O God, and scatter your enemies. Let those who hate God run for their lives. Blow them away like smoke. Melt them like wax in a fire. Let the wicked perish in the presence of God. But let the godly rejoice. Let them be glad in God's presence. Let them be filled with joy. Sing praises to God and to His name. Sing loud praises to Him who rides the clouds. His name is the Lord. 
rejoice in his presence. Father to the fatherless, defender of widows, this is God whose dwelling is holy. God places the lonely in families. God places the lonely in families. He sets the prisoners free and gives them joy, but he makes the rebellious live in sun-scorched land. O God, when you led your people out of Egypt, when you marched through the dry wasteland, the earth trembled and the heavens poured down rain. Before you, the God of Sinai, before God, the God of Israel, you sent abundant rain, O God, to refresh the weary land. There your people finally settled, and with a bountiful harvest, O God, you provided for your needy people. The Lord gives the word, and a great army brings the good news. Enemy kings and their armies flee, while the women of Israel divide the plunder. Even those who lived among the sheepfolds found treasures, doves with wings of silver and feathers of gold. The Almighty scattered the enemy kings like a blowing snowstorm on Mount Zalman. The mountains of Bashan are majestic, with many peaks stretching high into the sky. Why do you look with envy, O rugged mountains, at Mount Zion, where God has chosen to live, where the Lord himself will live forever? It's actually with a question, where the Lord himself will live forever? Surrounded by unnumbered thousands of chariots, the Lord came from Mount Sinai into his sanctuary. When you ascended to the heights, you led a crowd of captives. You received gifts from the people, even those who rebelled against you. Now the Lord God will live among us there. And yesterday's Proverbs. Trust in your money and down you go. Trust in your money and down you go. But the godly flourish like leaves in spring. All right. That's today's word. Since we had a mishap with the show and my live stream apparently crashed and now this is only being recorded and not being uh, streamed live, there's no way for anyone to add comments here at the end of the show or interact. So we will close it out. All right. I'm not sure how this is going to happen. I've never had a live stream completely crash during, during the broadcast. And so we will find out. Hopefully, uh, we'll still have access to the video. And we'll get it out there, and uh, we'll keep moving forward. Just got to keep moving forward. Hey, today's show was about problems. Today's show was about problems, and for the first time ever, my live stream crashed during the broadcast. So that's say la vie, right? Say la vie. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus came to give us life and life to the full. Let's do that. Let's do that. Let's keep moving forward. Let's find life in Christ above all things. Let's live above our circumstances. Let's live with intention. Let's know where we are, let's know where we're going, let's know why we're going there, and let's make today count. Hey, let's keep finding joy in the journey and keep moving forward. Let's, let's, uh, let's think, let's think. Where are we going? What do we want to do? Who do we want to be? Let's seek God. Let's seek wisdom from God. Let's seek God. Let's see what He gives us, and then let's move towards that. That's what I'm doing here with Finding Life on YouTube, and I want to help you do the same. Not necessarily YouTube or any of that, but whatever God calls you to do, whatever you're supposed to do with your life. All right. Let me know any way I can help. Until tomorrow, we'll do this again and keep finding life. Hey, friend, thanks for watching my video or listening to my podcast. Again, I'm so glad you're here. If you would like more information about finding life, please be sure to subscribe. Don't forget about my free PDF download, the top three keys to finding life, which also includes the one decision that completely changed everything for me and can for you too. I'll have a link to it below. If you would like to help me help others find life, please be sure to give me a like, leave me a comment, a review, share with your family and friends. Any activity I get helps me help others find life. Lastly, don't forget to let me know how I can help you. What challenges are you facing? What are you struggling with? Let me know how I can help you specifically. Leave me a comment, send me an email, or set up a call with me. Until next time, let me leave you with this. There is a common thread that connects us all, and there is more to life than meets the eye. If you have ever felt like there has to be something more to life, you're on the right track. Keep moving forward. Yeah.